So Boltzmann was a, a chemist who had some very interesting ideas and he was unfortunately a little bit ahead of his time. So he had a little bit of difficulty getting people to first of all understand and second of all accept his ideas. But now we do completely accept them. And he had said that the entropy of the system could be related to the number of probable arrangements. And it turns out that if you did that, it was going to be that the entropy was equal to K sub B, which in this case, this is Boltzmann's constant. You'll notice this is a small K and a capital B. That's different than what we were talking about in the previous chapter where we had a capital K and a small b. We have no end of constants in this course and K is everywhere. So you have to be very careful to make sure you understand which one we're talking about at any given time. And then it would be multiplied by the logarithm, the natural log of W. Well, why is it W? Well, because Boltzmann was German. W stands for the German word Wahrscheinlichkeit. So this is likelihood, probability. He's counting the number of possibilities, accessible microstates is what we like to call these, right? But when we talk about possibilities, then of course we also end up talking about probabilities. So this is probable number of arrangements of particles at a particular temperature. Okay, so this W, that's what that stands for, the microstates. If you have something very simple like an atom of neon, well, neon exists as a gas at normal temperatures. So it has a lot of different microstates available to it. I mean, this is 44 million microstates, whoa. An atom of carbon, if it is in a diamond, has only 1.3 microstates. That might be a little bit surprising. You would think it's completely locked in. Wouldn't it just be one? Well, it's still wiggling, right? It's still got a little possibility. It's, a, it's, a, it's an atom of carbon. Its nucleus could be moving, right? It's just not able to move away from its location. It could still have some sort of little rotation going on or whatever. And so you end up with far fewer microstates in a solid than you do in a gas. And these numbers become absolutely enormous when you start talking about a mole of atoms, which brings me to a little bit more about Boltzmann's constant. Boltzmann's constant has a value of 1.381 times 10 to the negative 23rd joules per Kelvin. Well, where did that number come from? It turns out that it is the gas law constant over Avogadro's number. So this was expressed as the 8.314 joules per mole and per Kelvin. And this was your usual 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd particles per mole. So you see the moles will cancel and you'll get the joules per Kelvin. So when we talk about W, we've already talked about the fact that we have motion that is translational. The translational motion is why the gases have so many more microstates than um, liquids or solids. And if you have something that could rotate, so there's rotational, there's also vibrational. And this is the big one that means this is the reason why the 1.3 microstates came up for the carbon. Because vibration takes place along the bonds. And we know that in the diamond, there are these strong bonds holding things in place. So as soon as you're holding it in place so that you don't have translational motion, you set yourself up to have some sort of vibrational motion available. Now, having established that that is true, we can see that W can never be less than one. And now that we know what the formula is, we can say natural log of W. 
Well, if w is its very smallest thing, it's going to be a one. Natural log of one would be zero, right? So that means that s has to be constrained to always be greater than or equal to zero. Why? Well, just again, because s would be k times the natural log of w, and if w was the very smallest thing it could be, which would be one, you would have k times zero.